Hello, this is Ryan Thompson, Assistant AD for Athletic Communications here at Davenport University, and we're continuing our one-on-one -on -one series, and today we have head football coach Sparky McEwen. Sparky, how are things going with you? It's going all right, Ryan. How are you doing? Not too bad. Uh, the first question I got for you today is, uh, how are you and your family kind of coping with everything going on with the uh, coronavirus pandemic? You know, we're, we're hanging in there tough, you know, just like everyone else, you know, right now we've got, um, you know, uh, between Christy and myself and what we do with work, <clears throat> we obviously, um, you know, got a lot of time here uh, outside of work. You know, I got the honey, honey do list that I have to take care of here and things like that. And uh, that's all outside of, you know, our calls with work and things like that. So uh, plenty of time here and spending time with Boomer. You know the 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 new dog that uh, we 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 took on last year. He's now ten months and about 120 pounds. So uh, I think he's making out better and during this time than we are. <laughs> That's great. I know spring football for you guys is a major time uh, to develop talent and to get some things going. But you know what kind of setbacks do you think that that could mean for the fall? You know, the, I, well. Two things. Uh, there was a fortunate side to it and then the unfortunate. The fortunate thing was, Ryan, you know, uh, we had a number of transfers coming in January. Uh, out of the GLIAC teams, I think we actually had more practices or attempts at practices than anyone else. Uh, therefore, we got four in, so we were actually able to see, you know, um, you know, those guys, their talents and what, you know, what they'll possibly, you know, bring to the program for. So uh, the negative thing to that was, um, the, the player development, man, we didn't, we didn't, you know, get a chance to complete the portion of the player development that we had, we had started. And um, it, it looked like it was going to be uh, possibly one of our best springs. Uh, our numbers were up. Um, so we were excited about that. We we're excited about looking at some of our young talent. Um, my freshman class that I was so highly on, um, it was time for those guys to show and shine and show what they can do. And we were excited about that. Then all of a sudden, whoop, you know, things got shut down. And, um, you know, so now we're just learning to deal with the things that we can control, the things that we preach so often. So now it's going to be practice uh, what you preach. You know, how have you and your staff adapted to the recruiting approach that you have to do during this time? You, you know, Ryan, you know, I've done a number of interviews about this, and, and I think football is so ahead of the curve you know, on this, we do a lot of, um, you know, recruit, recruiting via social media, um, you know, whether it be Twitter, IG, Facebook, um, you know, I mean, there's just so many things that, you know, we were already accustomed to doing, you know, but the one big change is um, the meetings that we have as a staff, you know, via Google Meets or whether it's, you know, you know, Zoom, whatever. Um, we're 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 watching more film as a staff before uh, this thing. You know, before this thing happened, we would watch it individually, or it'd be me watching with the position coach. But now we're doing more as a staff, so um, there's definitely some benefits there. Um, but familiarity, we had already, you know, been on top of that whole deal with um, the recruiting uh, via social media and things like that. You know, when I take a look at recruiting, uh, you know, what areas are you trying to kind of fill in and, and recruit a little more heavily right now? Is it something on offense or defense or maybe some position group for you guys? Well, for us, you know, each year you go in and one of the things that I like to do uh, is take a look at each position area and take a look at, you know, our depth is number one. And then number two, how young or how old are we? OK, and then, you know, you have to think about this one. How talented are we? You know, do I have to go in and bring in um, someone that can bridge the gap as far as talent versus youth and knowing that my young guys that I recruit from the four year, um, you know, for the record, you know, I'm a big four year guy. I like the high school guys that you can develop over a period of time. Um, but if that kid doesn't seem to be developing as fast as he needs to, we need to bridge that gap. And the way that we bridge the gap is by going out, whether it be a graduate um, transfer or whether it be a community college transfer or whether it just be a regular transfer. So uh, we have to look at our roster and scrutinize it that way. Uh, and that's how we get a better idea of, um, you know, the type of kids and where we're at on our roster when it comes to talent and what we recruit. 
Sure. You know, I'm sure you've heard this question before too. You know, what are your thoughts about whether fall sports like yours will be started on time? And what does that even look like? Have you thought about that? Well, you know, if you think about this, um, there's a lot of options out there right now. And the amazing thing is, you know, when you take a look at the world, um, man, I don't think I've ever seen the world come together as the world is right now. And when I when I talk about coming together, I'm talking about in a form of doctors working with one another. We have not, we have not found a vaccine. Um, everyone's just kind of baffled with, with what's going on. Um, my deal is we have to follow the CDC orders and and in order for us to get a, a great feel for the future. Um, you know, my hopes like everybody else's, you know, Ryan, is that, um, you know, there's a silver, li silver lining here and we're gonna be able to get back and play. You know, what does that look like? Uh, Ryan, I tell people all the time as they talk to coaches, you know, if you got these task force and things like that, that you're developing, I think when it comes to the different sports, part of the task force should be some of these coaches, because I could definitely tell you what it looks like. Um, you know, one of the things I can say to you right now, Ryan, is I bet you right now, no one's thinking about a center touching a football and snapping into a quarterback that's taking a snap, a direct snap or a pistol snap. And now that quarterback passes the ball. Uh, now that receiver catches the ball, for catches it for a touchdown, he comes and gives Coach Sparky a high five. You know, what does all this, what does this truly look like? You know, so um, our coaches, we've had our conversations and, <clears throat> you know, we, we're, we're excited about getting back, but what's it look like? I don't know. And um, I think in the coming days, we're going to have a better, you know, uh, idea what that looks like. I think everyone's watching the NFL really close to see you know what they're going to do. I think they're going to be the test model here. And, um, you know, because they've, they've spent big bucks in research, they've spent big bucks in, um, you know, making sure that they give everyone um, an opportunity to see football in the fall. Yeah, let's take a look at um, switching gears a little bit here. You know, there was a great story about Malik Hayes that was run uh, not too long ago. What can you tell me about his progress and how inspirational he's been to the team? I talked to his mom yesterday. And, um, and speaking with his mom, <clears throat> he's he's going to, uh, first of all, um, I like to say this about Malik, uh, what a courageous young man uh, and what he's had to endure and, and what he's come back from. Uh, it's a testament to, you know, um, how special he is. Um, you know, he's still not out the woods. You know, there's things that he's going to have to do in his rehab and treatment that's going to test and challenge him. Uh, but he's built for this. He's built for this. He's come a long way and, and we're extremely uh, proud of him. Um, man, he's got a, his mom, uh, his support team, you know, with his dad, um, everyone's doing a great job, you know, his friends, um, you know, uh, but like I said, he's got a long road ahead of him, but man, he's, he's headed in the right direction. You know, I'm sure you've heard the news with Ashland leaving the GLIAC after this season. What kind of impact does that have on football in particular with scheduling and things of that nature? Well, you know, um, you know, the ADs, they're going to have some decisions to make there. Uh, but in regards to them leaving, uh, you hate to see it. You know, um, one of the things, and, and you know this, Ryan, and dealing with, you know, individuals from Ashland, uh, first class. You know, first, you know, the, the first thing I think about is first class. You know, we're losing a, a, an amazing, uh, talented group of athletes in each sport. They've always been extremely competitive. Um, they've always made the road tough, you know, uh, for everyone that they would uh, be in a contest with. Uh, losing them, you hate to see it. Uh, but during this pandemic, you know, things, things happen. And even before that pandemic, you know, you got so many teams in Ohio that uh, it looks like and, and seems to be uh, the right move for them, you know, in relationship, you know, to the, um, the financial ramifications, you know, so um, the future, uh, it makes it tough us on all, tough on uh, our GLIAC brethren, you know, uh, because, you know, we got to, uh, you know, figure out uh, football wise, you know, what we're gonna do scheduling wise, it makes it tough on us, but, um, you know, we've been down this road before. Our commissioner, 
Uh, she does a tremendous, tremendous job. I know she's a tireless worker in trying to make sure that, um, you know, we have, you know, the proper teams uh, to come into our conference and things like that. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's in good hands. It's in good hands there. Uh, but we'll just have to continue to look for another opponent on our, um, you know, our schedule. Sure. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time uh, out of your schedule to talk with me today and kind of in, inform uh, some of the people out there what's been going on with your program and, and you in particular. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely, man. We're excited about the season and I look forward to getting back. Great. And for uh, and everything else about DU Athletics and football in particular, you can visit dupanthers.com and then search DU Athletics on social media.